here on the couch for the Cassie Project, and you know the objective is to provide sharing, healing, and living for survivors of sexual and domestic abuse. Well, one of the important things I felt in order to release ourselves as a survivor is to hear from someone on the other side, to hear the other side of the story. So today, Noel is joining me on the couch to share his story. Thank you for joining me. Thank you, ma'am. I'm a pleasure to be here. And you are a reformed abuser? Yes, I am. Is that the correct title, or do you have another title? No, I think it's reformed would be the perfect way. You know, I had to go through some counseling and some emotional truths mm -hmm. to find out who I really was and to take steps to fix it. Now, you were a perpetrator of physical or sexual or, or emotional, emotional type of... Emotional, and I never really viewed that as a, I was a very vac black and white person, military, military contractor, mm -hmm. overseas, mm -hmm. so I led my life the same way, you know, military everything. So yeah, it was. Uh, I was very mental, very uh, verbal. You know, do this, do this. Why can't you do this? Why can't you do that? Okay. Now I know that I've been in relationships where, um, and it didn't even occur to me that I was, I guess, being verbally or or mentally abused. You know, you know, the way I did it was stupid or, or things like that. Did you use those type of names, or were you just really just like a militant? Well, I wasn't exactly a militant like in the aspect. I just had certain standards. Um, I never, I, I was raised never to call anybody stupid, fat, or ugly. So you know, I always thought, well, I'm not saying those things, but I would always give a look or maybe a feeling or a vibe come off me that, you know, I didn't appreciate the way that it was done. Was she scared of you? No, no, not at all. No, no, not at all. But, you know, you crush a person's spirit with your with the way that you act. And, and you don't have to be words. Sometimes it can just be a look. And and that's was where I was like an a, abuser. A isolated relationship? Or was it something that you um, practiced as you were growing up throughout all of your relationships? Well, you know, it's funny. I look back on some of my relationships you know, and I never really thought I was an abuser. Um, I think I was raised that way. I was raised where the man is the head of the household. He is um, really the undisputed head. And, you know, and I, I was raised that way. So I just thought that's the way things are. You marry, the woman's next to you. You know, I've since learned that she's beside you. You know, and yeah, I was raised that way. I was raised, I, not, definitely not isolated. and But... It was just the environment of the family I was raised in. All the men were big, strong guys. But to put your hands on a woman in my family meant everybody was going to come down on you. Oh, okay, so you guys didn't, your family was totally against the physical Absolutely. abuse aspect of it, but never really recognized what was going on at the time with the authoritativeness and things yes. like that as being some form of abuse. Yeah, well, it was abuse. It was absolutely abuse. And it took me about six weeks in the class to realize that with Miss Dixon that, you know, hey, you know, my emotional reaction to things is abusive to the person that I'm supposed to love. Yeah, but no, in my family, physical violence to a woman was cowardly. When you were talking about how you were brought up, I mean, if you think about, you know, the old school days, it's like the man wears the pants, the, the, the woman, you know, is a happy homemaker and things like yeah. that. When you think about it, some of those relationships, they were all ab abusive in a way because the woman had to submit to what the man, you know, said to do. But we never really considered it abuse because, again, that's just the way that we thought it was supposed to be. And it definitely was, um, it was an eye-opener to the fact that, you know, whoa, you know, I'm not taking that person's feelings into account and the love. You know, yeah, you, you know, uh, my mind abuser was a hitter. You know, I know that's very narrow-minded and everything. Our person who says mean name, cuss words, and all oh, you're stupid or you're fat, and it wasn't that way with me. And I thought, there's no way I can be an abuser. Here I am, you know, I, I provide everything. Once again, I provide, you know, and it was just wrong. And it took a while, but um, that relationship was damaged beyond repair but it allowed me to go into another relationship with no baggage and with true heart for, hey, you know, okay, I'm stepping over the line, I need to take a step back. And it gave us a chance to really grow. And I'm in the healthiest relationship of my life. Now, we're definitely gonna talk about that because, let me ask you another question. So you went through this program. First of all, how long was the program? Uh, 12 weeks, this one was 12 weeks. Okay, so you went through a 12 week program. Were you court ordered to do so? No, I was actually, I was not court ordered. Um, I knew that there were some problems, so I agreed with my ex-wife to take the class on my own, with my own initiative. That's good. Um, we were talking to one of the um, facilitators from the um, 
the Family Violence Prevention Center, and she was saying that most of those participants are court ordered. But to know that you came in voluntarily, I mean, that speaks volumes. The fact that you acknowledged or even recognized that something was going on with you that you needed to put a stop to is absolutely huge. So I have to commend you for that. Thank you. Because most men don't even acknowledge that they've done anything or that they feel like that, you know, that they should be reprimanded for anything. Well, I, I, I definitely, I saw the damage, whether some of the accusations or whatever were true or not true between me and my ex-wife, I saw the damage it was to the kids. And and I needed to whatever, start the healing process. And if it was this class or a 20 week class or whatever, I needed to start it to start the healing for the kids. And, you know, maybe my ex-wife can now move on because I've moved on. It's time for her to move on. Now, did you apologize to her? Well, we haven't gotten to that point yet. We're, um, I'm hoping that that'll come soon. We haven't been able to be in the same room yet. She still has a lot of resentment towards me. Um, so, there, and there's a lot of control issues with her on that issue. Okay, do you think it's important, I mean, because you went to classes and you know, you're now reformed as the um, survivor or the victim or, you know, your ex-wife, do you think it's necessary, you know, important for her to, to get some type of treatment? Absolutely. Um, and, I, and, I, and one of the things that I found out is there sometimes can be two abusers in the family. And you don't realize that because you're playing off each other. Unfortunately, in ours, she was playing off mine. Mm -hmm. Not She was never abusive the way that I was, but like she would withhold things, and I thought that was abusive. And, um, you felt to, like that was a lack of honesty, that she wasn't completely being honest with you about things when yes, you say withholding? Yes, absolutely. And, and, and I needed... I think that to, for anybody to get over what you've been over through with domestic violence, and we were married for over a decade, so I think everybody needs counseling. Everybody needs closure. And you need to do it in a professional place. Because the thing, you know, like they always say, swimming in your own mind is a dangerous place to swim alone. Yeah. So. I've never heard that, but that makes total and complete sense. It's not where you want to be by yourself is in your own mind. And I think that, you know, hopefully she'll find the right support for that. And, it, and I don't want to, I hate to say sometimes that the support they find is other angry people. Mm -hmm. And I hope that she finds, like I did, a connection with people who they were wanting you to heal, and they want your your partner, your ex-partner to heal too, not with remorse or regret or anger, just heal. And that's the hard thing for people to do nowadays is to find healing and peace on both ends. Tell me, um, during the course of your um, reformation, is that a word? Yeah, Reform cool. Okay. <laughs> Go ahead. During the the words. You're running for, <laughs> she's running for politics. She's making up words now. Um, referendum. I didn't say referendum. I said, anyway, during, during the course of your classes, um, your uh, treatment, so yes. to speak, what was the one thing that stood out to you? What do you think it was that actually put you over the top and let you know that you had moved into a new place, that you were no longer the man that you used to be? Um, having to be totally honest with what you had done. You know, well, I, I, you have to change the I statements to, you know, to basically caring statements, you know, and you stop looking at what she did and, and you face it back on you. It took me about six weeks to get into that. Taking responsibility yeah, for your I own actions. I was mad at Miss Dixon. I was mad because, you know, because the things that, you know, they always say, we've been in church, we both know, you know, when you're, when you're being burned on your butt by, by knowledge and by truth, you know, you kind of want to squirm and you can't get away. And with that, Miss Dixon was bringing out the truth, and that's that week six. I'm like, wow, you know, I'm not a physical abuser, but I'm an abuser mentally with my word, you know, with my emotions, not my words. Yeah, something that you're doing is hurting yes. someone else, and, and that would be abuse. And it hurt the whole household, you know. So how are your babies that. now? My, well, how old are they? How how are they doing? You know, you've gone through this program and everything. How are they? Um, they're struggling. Um, they're struggling because we're about ready to go through the uni reunification process. Because I haven't seen, I got back from Iraq, Kuwait in 2010, so I really haven't been with my kids in two years. So we're going through that. My daughter, six, cries a lot for me. Um, my 11 year old's a little angry. My 18 year old lives with me and he's leaving for the Air Force. He's very structured and, and we have a wonderful relationship. And my oldest daughter, it's a struggle because she's 19 and knows everything. Well, yeah, I can imagine that. Are you are you teaching them the things that you're learning in class? Yes, I actually um, have branched out into more classes. I've taken the parent toolbox and stuff like that to, um, and that structures more on um, using um, redirection, okay. 
which is hard to do when you're old school military. It's not redirections, it's now, now, now. And we've went away from that. You know. Well, congratulations you. on all of that. And speaking of congratulations, what is this I hear? Something fabulous is happening in your future? Yes, I'm going to probably be remarried in a year to a lovely woman named Jackie. You don't have to hide, Jackie. <laughs> call you over she doesn't want to be on camera but I, I just I mean and if she was on camera the one thing I would want to ask her is if there was any fear have you guys talked about it? does she have any fear of you maybe um, regressing actually no um, she was very supportive of the classes when we started our relationship we were brutally honest with each other because I had to tell her you know I'm like look you know this is what my past is like and she understood I mean she was hesitant don't get me wrong First time in my life, besides a governmental agency, I got a full background check by a woman. <laughs> Good for you. Good for you. She even knew my credit score. And you're getting married anyway? Is that good? I mean, you got good credit? You no, got a brother? No, I ain't got good credit. <laughs> <laughs> Divorces don't do good for credit. Oh, but yeah, uh, but no, um, she gave me a chance. But, you know, she has very good boundaries, you know, and, and that's a good thing. That's what I, I needed. And with that, being able to be who I was and honest was a wonderful way to heal. Um, definitely listen to your red flags and understand. Um, be honest with the situation. And um, I would say mostly look at the person. Get, you may have to give the person a chance. Definitely do background checks. I'm, I hate to say that nowadays, but... Uh, be honest at where you're at. And if you're honest and your partner or the person you want to date's honest, some cool things could happen. Well, it sounds good to me. That's fabulous advice. And we're here in Xenia. Thank you so much to the Family Violence Prevention Center for having us out for this event. <laughs>